Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. My guest today is Mr. Uh, Liu Shizhong. Uh, Mr. Liu is the vice chairman of TITRA. What does TITRA stand for? TITRA stands for the Taiwan External Trade Development Council. Um, it's really great to have him with us. And hello there, uh, Mr. Liu. How are you doing today? Very good, Bill. Uh, it's my honor to be on your show. Oh, uh, that's great. It's really great to have you uh, with us. Um, you have such an impressive resume. I think Titra is very glad, uh, very should be very happy to have you as its vice chairman. Well, I I, I kind of uh, now think this as a once in a lifetime opportunity for me too. So <laughs> I cherish the opportunity of working here. That's great. That's great. Well, uh, let's get right into it now. A lot of our um, a lot of our viewers might not know uh, all that much about Titra. So could you please, please very basically tell us something about the history and the mission of the organization? Yes. Uh, I think ever since Taiwan withdrew from the United Nations in early 1970s, uh, I think the island country has been facing a very difficult um, you know, challenges when it comes to uh, its international space and international participation. So Taichua was established nearly 48 years ago as a semi-government organization doing mostly trade promotion for Taiwan because, you know, I think most people know that that Taiwan is a, is a, is a a big power in economy, you know. Geographically speaking, Taiwan is small, but economically speaking, Taiwan is a number 20 country, a big power, big economic power in the world. So Taichua throughout nearly five decades has been doing a lot of trade promotions, uh, organizing uh, exhibitions for Taiwan, and also try very hard to uh, to, to match uh, Taiwanese businessmen with the uh, their international counterparts. Mm. Interesting. Is Taitra modeled after the highly uh, Japan's highly successful JETRO, the Japan External Trade Organization? Yes. Uh, in fact, JETRO uh, from Japan is uh, Tai Chua's, Taiwan Tai Chua's, uh, kind of counterparts. And also in Korea, uh, they also have this kind of a similar organization called Coltra. Oh, okay. I would, that's exactly my next question. So thank you. You, yes. you saved me the effort <laughs> of going there. So in fact, there has been a lot of uh, a very, very uh, frequent cooperation between these two Asian uh, trade promotion organizations. And both uh, JETRO and COLTRA, they all have office in Taipei. And TAITRA from Taiwan has office in Tokyo and Seoul, too. Now, where else does TAITRA have offices? In Tokyo? Oh, where else? Uh, in, oh, well, in the world. Uh, Taichua, Taichua has 61 offices in the world, including the most recent open one in New Delhi, India. Hmm. Interesting. Now, the, the staff of Taitra, is, uh, do they come from different ministries of, the, of Taiwan's government, or they're all sort of, their first loyalty is to Taitra? Well, structurally speaking, Taichua is under the uh, you know the government umbrella of, of Ministry of Economics, mm. but Taichua also has a quite independent uh, you know ways of doing business. Uh, so uh, and and then uh, since we have uh, more than sixty offices in the world, we're kind of like a mini Ministry of Foreign Affairs, except we're doing mostly trade and investment issues. I see. That's interesting. Um, that's really interesting. So um, now, how how does the how does Titra develop external markets? Well, we well as I say, Titra has a history of almost uh, fifty years. We are about to celebrate our half century anniversary. Mm. Uh, so throughout this long period of time, we have cultivated a very 
uh, comprehensive networks with Taiwan uh, business community, especially the small and medium-sized uh, business. So we help them uh, to uh, to explore uh, business and investment opportunity, for example, in mainland China, and now, of course, uh, the area of what we call new southbound policy countries are also our, our top priorities. So uh, uh, within those 61 overseas offices that Taitra has, uh, we have 10 offices in mainland China and 13 offices in, in, in those areas of what we call new southbound policy countries. Wow, that's a lot. Um, is Titra's, is one of Titra's mission, especially um, during the time of the Tsai Ing-wen government, to help to um, limit Taiwan's dependence on uh, China as an, as an export market? Uh, that's not how we characterize this uh, new trade initiative. What the Tsai Ing-wen administration has advocated is more of a uh, concept of diversification, mm. you know, uh, because, of course, even even up to today, uh, Thai, over 40 percent of Taiwan's export all goes to China, including right. Hong Kong. Right. Um, and, and it's still going on. And uh, But recent year, in most recent year, we have seen uh, more difficulties uh, for Taiwanese companies to do business in mainland China for several reasons. For example, the, uh, the, the increasing wages and also stricter rules. Um, so even without the government uh, initiative to diversify Taiwan's overseas markets, for most Taiwanese companies who have been doing business in mainland China, they have already uh, came up with some new strategic thinking of uh, diversifying their 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 you know, office or or factory to uh, ASEAN countries or India. You know, so so right now I think uh, the timing uh, for the Tsai Ing-wen administration to introduce this new concept of new southbound policy was kind of a reflection of uh, most Taiwanese uh, business thinking, uh, especially after they have uh, invested uh, in the Chinese market for uh, more than 20 years. Right. Well, that's that's really interesting. Now, some of the problems that you mentioned um, that, that the Taiwan companies encounter in doing business on the mainland, you know, increasing cost of business, increasing cost of labor, mm -hmm. increasing um, regulation, um, by the by, the Chinese government. These are problems that all external uh, investors encounter. It seems. Yeah, and also that Taiwan is not the only country that has been uh, doing this kind of diversification. I mean, country, I mean, the Koreans are doing this, the Japanese are doing this. The, the Korean president uh, Moon Jae-in, when he visited Indonesia last year, he also introduced this uh, Korean version of moving south. You know, so I think more. Most Asian countries, on the one hand, they want to continue to, to do business with the Chinese, including Taiwan. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, they all know uh, there has been growing risk and challenges uh, when doing business with the Chinese. So the better strategy for them is to, uh, you know, to not put all eggs in one basket and right. to try to come up with some ways of diversify their uh, international outreach. Mm, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. And, and it would, I, I think it's probably fair to say that Taiwan companies in, probably encounter more difficulties in doing business in China, since the Chinese government also, uh, often looks at the Taiwan businessmen as a kind of a uh, lever for getting the government of Taiwan to unify with China. Yeah, um, of course, there's always this uh, so-called divide and conquer kind of strategy behind Chinese uh, policy toward Taiwan. But, you know, the irony is, if you look at the numbers, I'm talking about uh, Taiwan's overall export to the Chinese market in, throughout the year of 20, 2017, even after uh, Tsai Ing-wen administration uh, was in power for, for almost one year, you know, throughout the year of 2017, Taiwan's, Taiwan's uh, export to, a China, to China uh, has grown at average 12 percent. Even during the Tsai Ing-wen period? Yes, yes. Uh, that's so there, it seems to me that there is a, there's a tendency of a sort of a separate economics from politics. 
you know, you know, ever since Tsai Ing-wen, President Tsai Ing-wen took office, the Chinese side has suspended the official contacts. But when it comes to people-to-people -people engage, engagement and also trade and investment, I think it's still going on, you know. And, and we have seen a very, very impressive num numbers of growing. Even when it comes to the first quarter of uh, 2018, we see these numbers continue to grow for, for average double digit. That's very interesting. You just used the expression um, or indicated there's a separation between politics and economics. It sounds very much like the relationship between Japan and China. The politics are not yeah. very good, but the economic exchange is very good. Yeah, but you no, know, uh, you know, you know, cross trade. The uh, the nuance of political uh, of cross relation is that the Chinese has uh, has been very very unfriendly to Taiwan in in the political area. So, right. And they continue to harass Taiwan militarily and isolate Taiwan internationally. Right. Uh, they didn't re respond to President Tsai's uh, goodwill and olive approach. So, which is quite regrettable. Right. All right. Right. Uh, that's true. And, and especially in the last few months, there's been so much uh, military, uh, mainland military intimidation of Taiwan that's, that's been going on. Yeah, yeah. So going back to your earlier question, uh, it's not the Taiwan government's policy to limit or restrict Taiwanese uh, investment and trade with the Chinese. We wanted to do business with the Chinese. And the Thai Trust office, 10 offices in mainland China, continue to forge uh, um, new uh, opportunities of, uh, of investment for Taiwanese businessmen, too. But while doing that, we we'll also try to explore other uh, global markets uh, for the Taiwanese uh, businessmen. So, in, in, okay, you said there are 10 Taitra offices in mainland China. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many personnel are there? How many Taitra personnel are there? Well, uh, globally speaking, uh, Taitra has uh, 1, 000, nearly 1,300 staff, including local employers. You know, oh, okay. but in, Thai, in, in mainland China, I think we have uh, uh, among those 10 offices. I think we have explored at least 50 to 60 staff there altogether. Yeah, altogether. Yeah. And I can imagine your offices are in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou. Uh, yeah, Chongqing, Chengdu, all major Chengdu, cities, yeah. Uh, yeah. Xi'an. Yeah, almost all major cities, yes. Okay, all major cities. Uh, it, but it's interesting that um, with the new office setting up in New Delhi, India, right now Taito has four offices in India. I read that on your website. Um, yes. <laughs> new Delhi, uh, Kolkata, Mumbai, and uh, Chennai, right? Yes, yes. That's quite interesting, because I remember it was just a few years ago, the Indian government was very hesitant about having any more uh, Tecro offices in, in India. And now they're allowing more Taitra offices. I mean, I think that says something. Yeah, but I think the India government's uh, foreign policy and trade policy has transformed a lot in the, in the past few years. They have... Um, they have replaced the old version of looking east with this new initiative of acting east. So especially under the uh, premiership of uh, Modi, mm -hmm. I think the Modi government has been pushing forward aggressively uh, easternward. So I think the Indian government wanted to do business with not only Taiwan, but also you know, other parts of Asia. Um, recently, through Thai Trust efforts, uh, for example, there are two major initiatives uh, there has been uh, progressing. One is that uh, Thai Tra, uh, I mean Taiwan side and India side have jointly uh, agreed to uh, uh, develop uh, a electric vehicle uh, uh, project. You know, because India they wanted to to transform their 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 you know, their traffic. I mean, they want to deal with their traffic and pollution. So they want to uh, have more electric vehicle and electric uh, motorcycle. So Taitra has been. Uh, uh, bring, bring a lot of Taiwanese uh, electric uh, motorcycle and vehicle company to India to explore more markets. Another project uh, that has been going on is a, a, a new initiative to open up a petrochemical complex in India. Wow, that is really interesting. I think this is a yes. good place to take a break. 
Uh, you're watching Asia in Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Uh, I'm talking to uh, Mr. Liu Shuzhong. He is the vice chairman of TITRA, the Taiwan External um, Trade Development Corporation, Council, rather. And uh, we're having a really interesting talk about uh, how TITRA seeks to increase uh, Taiwan's exports. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Welcome back to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Today I'm talking to uh, the Vice Chairman of TITRA, uh, the Taiwan External Trade Development Council. And uh, we're having a really great uh, conversation here. Uh, just before the break, we were talking about, uh, well, we're talking about a lot of things. So we're talking about the number of offices that TITRA has in uh, China and other places around the world. Um, Tell me something, does TITRA promote investment in Taiwan at all? Oh, yes. Part of TITRA's effort is to, through our international connection, hopefully uh, we will help the international investors, joint ventures, to uh, get to know more about Taiwan's investment environment, because the current government of Taiwan has been doing a lot of efforts trying to, uh, to make a better environment for foreign investment, especially in the area of green energy, startups, and also uh, some of the financial sectors. So we welcome the uh, foreign investor to explore opportunities or investment in Taiwan. And, and so, you, in other words, TITRA helps um, not only foreign investors to invest in those areas that you just mentioned, and I know that all of those are, are very prominent in Tsai Ing-wen's uh, economic thinking, but it, uh, mm -hmm. of course also yeah. helps Taiwan companies. Yeah, Taiwan is doing a two-way, two-way function. It's performing two-way functions. We want to bring Taiwan to the world, and also we want to bring the world to Taiwan, too. <laughs> That's a really great way to put it. That's a really great way to put it. Um, well, okay. Uh, well, we talked about the New South policy. I think we pretty well covered that. Um, now, TITRA also puts together delegations to visit the United States to purchase all kinds of American products, especially agricultural products, in hopes of keeping down the trade imbalance. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I mean, Taiwan has been doing this for years in terms of agricultural purchasing. And uh, I think uh, what happens uh, recently is, is, of course, this trade friction between the U.S. and China. And Taiwan has been watching very carefully uh, in this uh, potential trade war between Washington and Beijing. Mm. Why? Because uh, Taiwan, because of Taiwan's huge investment in mainland China, Taiwan companies provide a lot of uh, what we call the intermediate uh, devices, mm. uh, like smartphones and tablets, uh, mostly uh, components and parts uh, to the Chinese market. And in, a, in China, they, they reproduce it and then export to the, uh, the, US, the American market. And now Trump has introduced a series of uh, uh, increase of trade, uh, a tariff on, on the Chinese products. So that indirectly 
uh, will have some impact on Taiwan companies. But we are doing a lot of survey and research at this moment to try to find out what kind of impact or the extent to which those kind of impact might have on Taiwan's companies. Um, but the good news is, um, uh, for the those tariff list introduced and announced by the Trump administration, uh, for some of the industry like, uh, uh, for example, electronic communication devices and, and smartphone uh, parts, they were not included included in the uh, the tariff list so far. But of course, Trump has said that he's going to. He has instructed the USTR to do more research on the possible increase of uh, of tariffs on the Chinese market, so uh, on Chinese products. So we we are still doing uh, a lot of research, and so far the feedback uh, that we received from Taiwan's company uh, in China showed that uh, they the impact was not that serious so far, mm. so far. But still, we've been watching it very cautiously. That's good. But to get back to my original question. A Every once in a while, there's these huge Taiwan trade um, uh, delegations that come to the U.S. with the idea of buying yeah. a lot of agricultural products and other mm -hmm. American products, so as to keep the balance fairly, uh, the trade balance fairly even between uh, um, Taiwan and the U.S. Does TITRA organize those kinds of delegations? Yeah, it's a more of a joint arrangement between the uh, Ministry of uh, Economics and Taitra. Uh, so last year, uh, there was this delegation called Select USA. Right. So uh, uh, we organized uh, a lot of uh, big companies from Taiwan, and also small SMEs from Taiwan, mm -hmm. to Washington, D.C., and met with uh, uh, the officials from the, uh, the U.S. government. And also, but this year, I think next month, uh, Taitra, and also with the Ministry of Economics, we're, all, we're going to organize another group of uh, Select USA to Washington, D.C. But this time, um, uh, it just, um, um, my understanding is that we're going to also spend some time in some individual states, too, to hopefully uh, to, to reach deeply to the, uh, some of the uh, you know, U.S. Uh, you know, uh, market mm. in individual states. Ah, interesting. Well, you have to come to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, that could be one of the options, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure, uh, realistically speaking, I'm not sure the, uh, that Hawaii offers a, a very big market, but it's, 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 it's always a nice idea. Um, mm -hmm. I, I remember one of those delegations, a very recent one, uh, Guo Tai Ming, um, the oh, yes. chairman mm -hmm. of Foxconn was a member, and he announced yeah. a big investment in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, yes. But of course, that was more of the uh, the Foxconn's uh, their own decision to 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 investment uh, in in Wisconsin. Mm. I think most most uh, what Taitra's job is the most in, in most cases is to help the uh, SMEs or individual talent company to think about uh, uh, investment in the U.S. market. This is very interesting. Taitra's emphasis on SMEs. Did this start with the Tsai Ing-wen administration, or is this always been the case? I think it's always been the case because SME is a big bone of Taiwan's economies. Um, and of course, uh, I think diff when different parties are in, in power, of course, they have this kind of a priorities. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, for the KMT was in power, I think China, they put more emphasis on Chinese market. But I think the world is changing. China's uh, economic power. Uh, uh, has 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 sent a mixed message to the global markets. So I think now DPP is in power. So I think what Taiwan has adopted is more of a balanced approach. That is to say, well, we still want wanted to uh, to do business in the Chinese market, but we want to diversify our 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 uh, foreign uh, trade and investment outreach. So new southbound policies uh, include uh, 18 countries. Uh, that is 10. ASEAN countries, plus six countries from South Asia, mm -hmm. and then Australia and New Zealand. Right, right. Uh, but that's why it's doing business with the world, not just New South Down policies. Right, right, right. Uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, getting back to the SMEs, it always seemed that when the Kuomintang, the Nationalist Party, the KMT, was in power, it really kind of favored big companies, and it didn't pay that much attention to SMEs. Uh, but, well, but I think SME, um, 
sometimes when they find the potential market, they just go for it, you mm-hmm. know, even without the government regulation or government assistance. You mm-hmm. know. But if they are having trouble doing business in certain countries, um, in most cases, they will come back to Taiwan and, and seek help from the Taiwanese government. So it's, uh, it's the government, Taiwanese government's responsibility to make sure that uh, if they want to move their factory and company back to Taiwan, of course, we, 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 enjoy, we, we welcome that. So we will make sure that uh, Taiwan's domestic investment uh, environment is also uh, very good for them. If they wanted to uh, switch their companies and factory to, for example, Vietnam, Indonesia, or even Cambodia, I think Taichung has always in those countries too. So we will be happy to help them to uh, set up their their own new business in those ASEAN countries too. Does Taichung have any um, policy or goal to encourage countries, companies that have invested outside of Taiwan to move back to Taiwan? Is that any kind of active effort of Taichung? Uh, in that regard, I think there are other government agencies doing those kind of things. Oh, which one? Well, Taichua, it, uh, I think the Ministry of Economics and okay. also uh, the Council for National Development, oh. they are doing all those kind of things. For Taichua's main business, like I said earlier, uh, we wanted to bring as many uh, Taiwanese companies to the world and to explore trade opportunity, investment opportunity. On the other hand, we want to bring international investors and joint venture to Taiwan. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. And um, you, uh, Taitra organizes a lot of large-scale trade shows, doesn't it, both in Taiwan yes. and abroad? Yes, Taitra has been doing this kind of uh, uh, expos for, for many, many years, but starting in last year, because New South Bank policy is one of the, the, uh, the Chinese government's uh, policy initiative. So since last year's, Taichua put additional efforts to organize uh, four uh, exports in the new southbound policy countries, including Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, Malaysia. And this year, uh, Taichua is also going to uh, organize five additional, what we call Taiwan exports, Taiwan exports, in countries like Indonesia, India for the first time, and then Vietnam uh, and Malaysia and, Th- and Thailand too. Mm. So the idea is to 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 organize a bigger event, bigger uh, show events, expo events, and and we will bring local government from Taiwan, different agency from Taiwan to present their best quality of products, and also in a way to rebrand Taiwan. Rebrand, you okay. know, to rebrand Taiwan. The the ultimate goal is to rebrand Taiwan through those kind of uh, Taiwan exports, especially in the, what we call New Southbound Policy countries. Wow, that's really interesting. Uh, we're down to like our last 45 seconds, so let me just squeeze in one uh, kind of small question, and I'll ask you to give a pretty short answer to this. Okay, for these SMEs that might not be um, so knowledgeable about doing business abroad, does Taito organize training classes of how to approach external markets, how, what you need to do if you want to succeed in external markets, that kind of thing? Yes, Taichua has research center and training center too. We've been we've been cultivating a business talented for for years, and 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 for those students who graduate from Taichua's uh, training center, the number is over five thousand, and they are they are wow. everywhere in the major business uh, and companies in Taiwan. So they are very appreciative of Taichua's uh, uh, efforts to train them and provide them a lot of uh, uh, perspective. Wow, that's interesting. Very interesting. So, yeah, Taitra promotes investment of Taiwan companies in, uh, in all around the world, and it, it seeks to bring foreign investment to Taiwan, and it's very sensitive to the needs of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises, and it offers training classes to those small and medium-sized enterprises that might want to get into the global market. That's really quite a mission. Yes. Well, it looks like we're out of time again. Uh, like I always say, the time just goes too fast. I want to thank you so much for joining us and for your, you know, your insight and your very clear answers on, you know, how Titra has developed, what its mission is, uh, how it goes about, you know, uh, accomplishing its mission. Um, it's really great to see you again, and um, we'll see you soon.